In the last part, let's talk about how we can add type safety to API endpoints. So there's two methods of doing this. We can generate the types from the JSON object or we can use a schema validation tool like Zod, Joy, Yap, or whatever else you can think of. So here I have a Vit project, which isn't relevant. We just have a get Pokemon function, then gets a Pokemon you pass in. But the problem is that it returns promise any, so we really don't have any type safety or awesome auto completion, etc. because if we type Pokemon, for example, there really isn't anything here. And let me just start the development server so I can say npm run dev. And then if I go to localhost, here you can see the JSON response. And this is completely insane to type out yourself, right? Just look how much data there is here. <laughs> like, where do you even start? And this really isn't a great use of your time. So there might be some kind soul that typed all this out, and there probably is. And in the case of the Pokemon API, there's literally packages you can use that come pre-typed, or you can even use the GraphQL API endpoint. But let's say you don't have such luxuries. So what do you do? So the first line of defense we can do is use quick type. And really the point isn't that you should use specifically this side because there's a lot of tools that do this for you. This is just basically turning JSON into type safe code. So if we open QuickType, this is going to take a second, don't worry. So remember the API response that we had, we can just copy that over and we can go here. And this is already preloaded with another example for Pokemon API. And yeah, just paste it in and it really does the magic here. It converts everything to the appropriate types, which is awesome. So you can even give it the name Pokemon API response, which is going to be my case. So let me also find the options. So by default, it has turned on a bunch of things here, I think. So it also gives you uh, classes to validate the JSON, but we really don't care about that type of things. We really just want to enable interfaces only, and you can even turn this off. And this is really the option you care about. It's not going to use default TypeScript, I think. So you can just select TypeScript here, and you can just literally copy the code over and that's it. So what do you do next? So let's go into our project and inside source, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be a folder types. And we can just say API TS, close the sidebar. I'm going to paste the generated types and we can see all these awesome types. So it exported the individual interfaces or whatever it has, you can use individually, but they mostly come together in this major one. If we scroll to the top, export interface Pokemon API response. And how awesome is this? This saves you a bunch of time. So we can just import the types here. If you say import, but first let's do, we just see. Yeah, types, then we can do API. And again, you can press control space so you can get auto completion and we can say Pokemon API response. If you remember, this is the exported member interface, right? And then we can save this and let's change any to use our generated types. How awesome is this? Pokemon API response. Now let's save all of this. So now if you type Pokemon, we can see all of these options that we didn't know before. And now we have literally documentation inside our editor. So for example, if I go into abilities and you can see here in the schema, so abilities is an array that has ability is hidden and slot. So for example, if we do a for each and let me just make this super readable. So we can create a body. Do it like this. So even if we go and the structure values right now, we're going to have type completion. So press control space and we should see all these available options. How crazy is this? So we now have ability is hidden slot. And now if you want, you can do whatever you want. So you can say console log ability. Now it's going to have types for that. What's on the ability name URL. And that's correct, right? As we can see in the API. So let me just save this. And if I open the developer tools inside console, we should see static and lightning rod because we can see it's here. And here is another one lightning rod. And that's how that works. And that's really awesome. So let me just close the console. But there's a huge drawback with this. We're basically lying to TypeScript. And why is that? It's because the API could change tomorrow and we're stuck with these generated types. And we think the API is the same and this is going to break 100% and then we're in trouble. You might remember previously how we said that TypeScript can save you at runtime. And we've seen why that is because the types get stripped and only JavaScript is shipped to the client. But what if we can add runtime validation to our code? And that's possible because we can use a package like Zod that we can validate our schema. We can infer the type from the schema and everything is going to be great. So let me just close this and in our terminal, I'm going to install Zod. So let me just pause this. And say npm i 
Zod. Yeah, so let me just start the development server again. And now we can import Zod. Let's say import Z from Zod. So how does this work exactly? So for example, let's say that we have cons banana, we can say Zod object, I think, and then we open it and we can pass it anything we want. And then let's say our object is banana. And now we can say that banana has to be of type string. And this is how we're going to validate it. And this validation library is also awesome because you can do a lot of other things. You can say max length, you can say, is it required, uh, nullable and etc. So you can do a lot more. Of course, you can even go inside here. You can specify what's going to be the custom error message and is the error required, right? But we're going to keep it simple. So we have a banana here and then we can parse it. So Zod can check it at runtime if what we're returning from the API response, for example, is correct because we can say banana parse and then we can give it an object. So pretend this is an API response. We can say banana and we say string, but we're passing a number. So nothing happens now, but this is going to throw an error if I go here, right? And I open the console, let me just clear it. And I'm going to save and we should see an error. Uncode error, invalid type, expect a string received number. And for example, if we just turn this into a string banana, everything is going to be fine. And let's say that this is a number. We should also get an error, right? And expected number receives string. And we can also say max two characters, right? We're going to get an error string must contain at most two characters. And now when we're done with this parse, we can infer the type. So we do that by saying, let's, for example, say we're going to get a type banana, and then we can use Zod infer. This is a generic, right? And then we can say type of banana, whatever that is. And now if we hover over it, we're going to have type safety in our code. And this is really the best way to validate your API endpoint. So let's quickly do this for Pokemon and show how we can validate this. Yeah, so let's just remove this code. We can do abilities. So for example, if I go here, I'm just going to comment out or remove this completely because we don't really need it. So I can go here and type any. Let's give us some space. So we can say const Pokemon. And now we can say Zod object. And then we can pass it whatever we want. So for example, if you want to type this array, we can say abilities and we can say Z array and we can open it again right and inside here you can add all these options but let's keep it simple because this really isn't a tutorial on Zod right so I think there's a value if we look inside here I'm just going to close the developer tools I think there's base yeah here it is base experience so we can say hey there's a property base experience and it's a number which you have to say Zod number so Zod by default is only going to care about what you passed in and whatever else is going to receive is going to ignore it. But if you want it to fail when it encounters something that shouldn't be there, you can use strict and then you're going to get an error from Zod. It's going to be like, hey, all these other properties, I don't know about any of them, so I'm going to throw an error. But yeah, so we can use this and now we can infer the type. So we can say type. Actually, let's make this lowercase. So we can say type and now we can use Zod infer we can use a generic and you can say type of pokemon api response and everything should be fine so we can pass this here pokemon api response and now here where we get our data we can do try so what we're going to try remember from before we can say pokemon api response you can also do this in many different ways so we can say parse and of course you want to parse the data and we want to catch the error and we're just going to say if something goes wrong, console, oops. Yeah, and now let's go here. Let me open the developer tools. So we're not going to get an error because of course base experience exists and it's a number. But let me just first try if we type in strict. So this is the only value that should exist. And now we should get an error. Let me just refresh. Yeah, oops, here it is. And let me just remove where are the options. Yeah, we can just remove this because I forgot about this. Yeah, and this works as expected. So we can remove strict. And let's say that this should be a string, right? So let's test if this works. We should get oops again and we get oops. So how do we log out the value? We could have a thing here where we say return and then we can return errors and we can say error 
whatever. But now it's complaining because it really doesn't know what type this is. But Zod returns a Zod error type. So remember what we learned about TypeScript before. We can say if error instance of and we can import Zod error. Yeah, and then we can return the errors like this. But it's also complaining because it's expecting this type, but we're also returning this object. So here, after we infer the type, we can say, or maybe it has an object, right? That has an errors on it and the errors are of type Zod error. And if you want, you can even make this optional or whatever you want. So if you see here, instead of returning Pokemon, it returns the error. So now you can do whatever you want on the client to show the error. And now you get type safety even during runtime. And how awesome is this? So I hope you learned a lot during this series. And there's really a lot more to TypeScript, but you really don't have to worry about most of it because you're not going to use 90% of it, most probably. You just need the basic things. You're going to use interfaces, type aliases, etc., unions, what we learned generics are going to come in handy right so that's pretty much it all right thanks for watching and catch you in the next one